All right, what's going on, guys? Uh, this is going to be episode three of the podcast. Um, it's a um, cool, rainy, 68 degrees here in southern Ohio. And I kind of love it, but I kind of hate it because you can't really do anything. Um, I was wanting to really look forward to working with Karma, but it's pouring the rain and it's kind of cold outside. I know 68 is not cold, but when it's been 80 every day, it's kind of cold. So... It's me and the beautiful co-host Jade. She's um, she's here. She's just not talking right now. <laughs> um, we had a rough night last night. You want to tell them about that? No. Last night sucked. So, we went hunting last night, and should have just stayed home. Should have just stayed home. That's a fact. Um. You want to talk about your problem first or my problem? Which I guess technically they're both our problems, but... You want to go first or you want me to go first? Um, it don't matter. I can go first, I guess. Okay, we'll tell them what happened. Doc's for sale. No, I'm just kidding. Doc's not for sale. Um... He's on sale. <laughs> no. No. Um... I don't know. Last night just sucked. I don't. I don't really know why he did what he did last night. I mean, he's a dog that rarely slicks, and to slick two in a row is kind of unheard of for him, especially in the same night. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I really don't have an explanation. She didn't really tell you, but we made two drops last night, and Doc made two trees, and both of them were slicked. Like, it's not even like they were questionable slicks. I mean, they were both pretty, pretty yeah. bad. Like, I don't, and that's usually how our dogs slick. Like, there's not really usually a slick that's like, eh, there might be a coon there. It's usually, like, pretty definite, like, 100% not a coon there. So, it was kind of a, kind of a rough night. Um, in between the two drops so we were hunting really close to the house and we actually had um reaper and nelly with us last night and we decided after the first lick that we we're just going to bring the the pups home and um just take doc on the second drop well we pulled down to the barn where we keep all our dogs and um so my my poor truck um the <laughs> the shift tube and the shift cable, the bolt that connects them together, because it's automatic that runs, you know, the shifter, well, that bolt is loose, so it won't go in park. Um, park is not out of it, but it, where the, it's got slack in the cable, it won't let it, you can't get it up into park. So I was just sitting there around my barn, it's kind of on a hill, I let Jade get out and unload her dogs real quick. And I was sitting there, you know, truck running, had my foot on the brake, and I went put it in reverse to back up pull back on the road and when I pushed the brake pedal my foot went all the way to the floor I was like dang because I've had that truck for probably five years now if not if not five years going on five years and I've redone the brakes on it several times so I thought well there goes another wheel cylinder whatever um so I just kept driving because I mean we're, where we was going was only a mile from the house so on the back road we live on, I mean, pretty much don't need brakes anyway, so I kind of just rolled down through there easy, and when we got down to where we stopped, I pushed the brake to, because I mean, you, I've got to stop, so I pushed the brake to to stop, and I could hear the the um, brake fluid spraying out of the, out of it. like a cat. Yeah, Jade's like, did you just hit a cat? I'm like, no, it's brake, <laughs> that's brake fluid spraying out of my truck. I swear to God, it sounded like a cat meowing. So... I jumped out, and, and you guys will see it in the video. Um, either you, you will see it in the video, or you've already already seen it in the video. But I got back and looked at the rear end, and right above the uh, the actual differential, right where the two axle lines come together into that little, like, box where the rubber line comes in, and then it, it like, tees off to the two um, axle lines that go to the driver and passenger side, the hard lines. The hard line on the driver's side where it comes out and right before it 90s to go over to the driver's side it looks like it's maybe rusted through or split or cracked or whatever 
Um, it was literally spraying fluid out of there, so that's fun. Um, my poor truck, I mean, it's a really good truck, but like I said, it's, you know, I've had it for four or five years now, and it's coming up on 200 and, uh, 245,000 miles, so I mean, it's 2001, it, it's going to have stuff that go bad and wear out and all that, it just seems like it's always at once with that, <laughs> with that truck, so we'll have to put it in the garage, and um, the parts store doesn't sell a pre-bent, pre-flared line, so now I've got to try to either come up with a, a kit to bend and flare the tool, or bend and flare the line, or see if I can find the pre-bent line on online somewhere. Well, that's a lot of lines right there. Yeah, it is. Um, so, <clears throat> it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it could have been worse. I could have been driving down, you know, 65 mile an hour down the road, and it blew out completely, you know, and then I'm in a pile of trees somewhere, but it's still just a little frustrating. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to have it fixed before tonight, obviously, so we're probably going to hunt tonight, which it's supposed to be raining all day anyway, so uh, it's just one of those things, I guess. But I do have some good news for you guys. It might be good news. I don't know. I'm I'm on the fence about it, but you want to tell them or you want me to tell them? You can tell them. So... You guys are gonna, you guys are gonna kill us because this is like way too many. We already have way too many, but like I've talked about in you know the previous podcast in the videos, we hunt religiously. I mean, we hunt four to five nights a week. Uh, well, with exceptions, the past couple of weeks between the traveling and you know some personal issues and all that, and just the weather, uh, we typically hunt four to five nights a week, and. We're not real big, how do I want to say this? We're not real big on pushing a dog seven nights a week. I mean, yes, it, it, you know, some dogs need to be pushed seven nights a week, but really none of our dogs are that type. Um, two to three nights a week for our dogs is, is plenty for them. Um, and what we do is we rotate each week. Like we'll hunt the red dogs three nights one week. And then the black dogs two nights that week and then opposite the next week. Well, there's been these pups that I've been, I've been seeing. And I literally cannot get away from them. Like, every time, they, they're they coming on four weeks old now. And I cannot get away from them. So, I'm a huge fan of Poncho. Uh, he's a black and tan yeah, I just, I really like the dog. He, I'm a huge fan of him. Well, his owner slash breeder, Chad, has three litters of pups on the ground right now, and I cannot get away from them. I've tried. I've ignored them. I've talked about it. I've made posts on Red Outdoors about, you know, whether I should get one or not because I really want these this bloodline. I really want this blood into my bloodline that I'm trying to establish, and it's just like... I can't get away from them. I can't stop seeing them. And what really sealed, sealed the deal for me last night was, um, and I don't remember the guy's name, but somebody made a post in Black Dog Mafia and was like, old blood aside, you know, current dogs that are alive right now and that you could own, what cross would you make to produce, in your opinion, like, I, I'm paraphrasing here, but produce the best hounds black and tan hounds out there i got thinking about it and izzy is out of um hatchy river hoss and raging black wrath well wrath is out of raging black willie and you know hatchy river hoss has got some good pups out right now um the hatchy river hoss and sweet money cross produced that Mr. One of a Kind and Mr. One of a Kind is the other dog that I'm I'm following. Uh, he's um he's he's under a year old and I think he I think he lacks two or three wins to be a grand knight. Um I think he I think he's only lost one cast and been in in one dead cast and he's won the rest of them, I think. Don't quote me on that, but <clears throat> also this is off subject, but speaking of dogs, in the first podcast, you guys are listening to it, I said 
the dog I was talking about was Electric Rodeo, and I got the name wrong. I was talking about Uncle Cracker. I did not realize it until after I'd already posted the podcast that I got the name wrong when my buddy Cody over at Ridgeline messaged me. And there's been several people comment and message me, but it was too late to fix it. Um, I just got the dogs mixed up. It, it was Uncle Cracker and Electric Rodeo is what I was talking about. But uh, I just wanted to put, put that in there. I couldn't put it in the second podcast because it was already recorded and uh, scheduled to post when when I figured out that I had made a mistake. And it was an honest mistake. I didn't mean to misdirect or mislead, anything like that. It was just, just an honest mistake. But anyway, uh, that Mr. One of a Kind dog is out of Hatchie River Hoss, which is the same male that my Izzy's out of. And <clears throat> the guy the guy made the post, and I got thinking about it. I was like, oh, well, Chad Chad has those um, Hammer Sadie um, dogs on the, on the ground right now. If I could take a male from from that litter and breed to Izzy, you know, that that they go back to, I believe, Sadie. She's a, a silver champion. I believe she goes back to um, Ruffton's uh, splitter, which is what Hercules, my 13-month-old male, goes back to. And what I said was, is I would breed them, um, a pup out of that hammer and Sadie cross, to my Hatchie River um, Black Wrath, Raging Black Wrath cross. And then I would keep a female out of those two and breed that, breed her to Hercules, which goes back to Splitter. So that'd be Heavy Splitter bred, which theoretically should be some independent coon dogs. And that's really what I like. And I got to thinking about it and got to talking. And I even screenshot the post and sent it to jade and my buddy cody we have a group chat and i was like i think i just convinced myself inadvertently to buy one of these pups because i got to thinking about it i was like you know if that if that is the one cross that i would make right now of dogs that are alive and i have the opportunity to buy that that male pup and you know potentially put it in motion why wouldn't i so i got to thinking we went back and forth how long did we talk last night about these dogs I mean, I worked an eight-hour shift, and we were still talking about it when I got off work, so. I mean, and that, and it's not that, you know, either, any of those litters, I think, he's got three litters on the ground, I think every one of them is going to produce good dogs. So, it was really hard for me to figure out which one I thought was going to be the best. I messaged a couple people that I know in the black, black, tan, black and tan community. And and all that. And I just, when I got to thinking, and I don't know ages and everything, but I got to thinking, so Poncho is out of Hammer. And Hammer's getting up there. Hammer was the first, I believe, the first dog that Chad had in the Black River Dogs. So he's getting up there in age. And he produced Poncho. And Sadie um, is, I believe she's a silver champion, because he's silver champion. And I know she's a Grand Knight champion. So she should be a pretty decent dog, to, I mean, to win that. I don't know her. I've never hunted with her. I've never seen anything about her, really. I know she um, she won something or was in the top top of something at um, Black and Tan Days last year. I need to get, when you start making notes so I can remember this stuff. But, I know. Um, I need to do it for the Red Dogs, too. But she, she should be a good dog, and Chad said she's re- reproduced some some good dogs so anyway that that's why i end up going with with the hammer cross and not the poncho dog because poncho's young i mean hammer's getting up there in age and i know he's i know he's produced some good dogs obviously produced poncho so that's kind of why i went with it and like i said i mean yeah that puts me at four black and pans but like we was talking last night and it's gonna be a whole lot easier to if this dog is not the caliber of dog i want to establish my lines i can always sell it a whole lot easier than I can try to buy it when it becomes something that I want. So it's just one of those things that it's a little bit of a risk, I guess. But I um, mean, every dog you buy is a risk. Absolutely. If you're being honest, like you can have the best bloodline with the top reproducers and it's still a risk. Right. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, you could take, well, it's like those, um, those G pups we were talking about. G-man and bugs. You know, they're like 
I think that's what it was, wasn't it? I can't remember. I know they're up there in price. They're re- they're they're probably the most expensive puffs I've ever seen. I will say that, with a good reason. I mean, G Man, you know he's he's a good dog. He's uh, he's a platinum champion. All that he's produced. Um, you know any of the dogs that he's. I know he's produced well, bounty. Bounty hunter, because that's what Reaper's out of. Bounty hunter is a grand knight and a grand champion four <clears throat> on the show bench. So. He's produced more. It's just I don't I don't know the actual name of him. Anytime T Mac posts about G, he never really says any of the dogs' names, and I don't know. I never really have the time to try to dig for it. It's usually I'm outside on my break at work when I'm looking at it. So. Yeah. So. Anyway, you know, you guys might think we're getting a little too deep in this, and you might think we're crazy or whatever, but. You know, I know people that don't hunt that that know us think we're absolutely nuts for having this many dogs, but oh yeah, I don't know. It's just <clears throat> it's one of those opportunities that you know originally because I've been I seen him literally three or four weeks ago. I think it was when he originally posted him. I was like, no, I'm not gonna get one. I want one, but I'm not gonna get one. I don't really want another pup right now and all that. But they keep they keep showing up. I keep seeing them. I keep talking about them. And then yesterday when I said I was, you know, that's the cross I would make. And I realized that I have the opportunity to make that cross. Why wouldn't I? So, I don't know. It's just one of those things where, why not? You know, what's it going to hurt? Sally's not a dog that I can hunt, really hunt hard all the time. I mean, she's a good dog. I'm not talking down on Sally. I'm not talking bad about Sally, but. She's not a hard hunting every night of the week, you know, especially in the summertime. She's not, where she's a lineman or licky dog, she struggles with it, and it's just, it's hard on her. So I don't, it's not like I'm going to have to put somebody on the back burner, uh, which I guess technically I am, but like, I don't want, I, I, I feel bad hunting her that hard, if that makes sense, because she's just not, just not her. You're not really going to be putting any dog on the back burner because Herc's 13 months old, right? 13, probably 13 probably months 14 old. months old now. So, he will run a tree. Yeah. He just needs help with the running part because he don't want to go. Well, I mean, he, he'll run a tree zone coon. He's, he's ran a tree zone coon several times, and he's split tree several times. What he's having problems with right now is getting getting taken off and getting going, like... He'll go. Uh, you cut him loose by himself. He'll go, but he only he doesn't want to get in there deep enough to take a track. So that's what that's what he needs help with right now. And I think it's just a confidence issue. I think if if we get him where he goes with another dog a few more, t- you know, for another month or so, where he realizes you know he's got to get in there more than you know fifty sixty yards to pick a track and, and push, then he'll be he'll be golden. So, but honestly, this pup, you know, it'd probably be another four weeks. That's another month before they're they're even available to pick up, you know, weaned. Then I don't expect them to be, you know, ready to run and tree much before they're six, seven months old. That's another six, eight months before her, before I have another dog that I'll be running. So. And at that point, Izzy should already be... At least running a train with another dog. Oh, yeah. And if Hercules is not running and training his own coon by the end, with no problem. He'll be, you know, six months, he'll be 20. He'll be 20 to 22 months old. If he's not running and training his own coon by then, we've got a problem. Yeah. I mean, that, at that age, he should be consistently running and training his own coon by himself. You know, no big deal. So, and Izzy, Izzy's probably coming seven, eight months old. She, uh, Seven months. Is it? Pretty sure. Might be. No, she's no, com- she's coming, coming eight, eight months. She was born in February. She's coming eight months. Yeah. Um. She, you know, another six eight months. She should be running in tree and probably her own coon too. So I'll have this pup. I can run with them or whatever. But also speaking of Izzy, I don't know if it's still available or not. But there's a full litter mate to Izzy at the Hatchie River Raging Black Raft Cross. So. Um, I can't remember where I seen it at, but if you maybe you're interested in that, shoot me a message on on Facebook, and I'll see if I can put you on to. I know they're they're I know the it's a female. She's in Tennessee, 
So. Good news about last night is that was the first time Reaper ever split. Yes. And was trying to find his own track. Yes, he he split and was you know he even got in there and was pushing his own track and he took Nelly with him once when he split. Yeah, and then she came back and he stayed. <laughs> You want to tell them about what Doc did last night? The good thing Doc did last night? Oh, yeah. Doc was like, what, 140, 150 yards? At Maybe least. even farther? I think he was more like 190 <clears> because <throat> we were hunting on a cornfield. And from where we cut loose, it was like just shy of 200 yards down the edge of that corn to the timber on like a creek bottom there. And he, I'm pretty sure he was almost all the way to the timber there. <laughs> he literally come back nearly 200 yards, ran straight back to us looped between us and the pups, literally rounded them up and took them with him. It was, I mean... He's a good boy. There's no other reason he would have come back 200 yards other than to get those two pups. Because I didn't say a word to him. Jay didn't say a word to him. He literally come back, on, I mean, running, not just not just walking. He come running back to us, looped between us and the pups, kind of like corralled them, and then took them. And then that's when they really went hunting. Because when we cut them loose, Doc... Doc took off. I mean, he... Flew out of the country. He got gone. He went across that field and everything, and the pups kind of just stood there like... They uh, went a little ways, and they lost him, and they were like, well, what so, do we do now? So Reaper took Nellie back behind us and was kind of running on the wrong edge of the corn the other way, and they kind of got out, you know, 30, 40 yards and was running back and forth, and then Reaper took off and actually went almost all the way to Doc, and Nellie just kind of hung out. Yeah. And then Reaper come back. I don't know if he come back because he got lost or, or what. Or if he come back to get Nelly. And then when they both come back, then Doc come back and got them both and took them hunting. And, too, because, so when, once Doc come back and got Reaper and Nelly, Reaper stayed with Doc after that. He got up there and he split and was, you know, running, trying to, you know, pick his own track and all that. Well, Nell come back. She got in there. She hunted around a little bit and she come back. We kind of just ignored her. We were sitting in the truck at that point. I was watching him on the drive track. She kind of just ignored him. And then... We kind of ignored her. What? You said, you said she kind of ignored them. Oh, well, we kind of ignored her is what I mean. And she was kind of running around the truck. And, and there's a lot of stuff. I mean, there was a ditch line that comes right up behind where the truck was parked. So there's all kinds of opportunities for her to pick, a, pick up a scent. So we kind of just let her run around. It's not like she was just sitting in the truck. Doc struck in. No, he didn't strike in. Doc treed. That was another thing. I I was really nervous about it. I thought it was, I was hoping it was maybe a layup. I said, whenever he started treeing, that it was slicked. I called it. Because he never struck in. And Doc has this. I don't. Would you call it a ball? Yeah, I mean, it, he does. Yeah, it, it's a it's a very distinctive ball into a chop when he trees. He, he didn't, didn't do that. He didn't do that. He just started chopping. I was like, well, maybe it's a layup. You know, he's winded a layup or something but when he started that she was at the truck and she ran down that ditch line about halfway and then crossed over and she went to him so there's a lot of potential there i'm I'm really i'm really really looking forward to seeing what this pup makes because first of all she is the most athletic dog i have ever seen in my life i've never seen a more athletic dog than nelly like I worry about her getting over kennel all the time because she can jump. She's fast. Like it's insane because Jack's our one of our house dogs is, is quick. It's very, very quick. And when we first got Nell, we had her in the house for a week or two and I let him out to go to the bathroom and her and Jax were playing and Jax was running with a toy and she fast was fast as he could go and she was trotting and beating like it's, it's insane. So, I think we should clarify that Nellie's never really been worked with. She has, but she hasn't been, like, pushed hard. She's been on the show bench. Um, I mean, hunting-wise, she's never really been worked with a whole lot. From what we were told. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to see what she, she becomes, because I think she's going to be a good one. But, and the same thing with this other pup. I'm... Karma, and then uh, we have we have a name for my pup now. We're kind of getting way off topic here, but um, we don't have a name for my pup. And then we've got bad karma. So 
we're going to have two pups. You guys should be seeing training videos on the two pups. Um, Karma's feisty. Yeah. If you, have, if you don't know who Bad Karma is, um, our last video, well, it's not our last video, but top, I titled a video, South Carolina Trip, What Are We Getting Now? And that's the video where we went and got Karma. So if you want to check out that video, it's on our YouTube channel, just Red Outdoors, uh, same as the podcast. But yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the plan going forward. Uh, we're getting another pup that puts us at about 18 too many dogs um but it's like i said it's one of those things i just couldn't i couldn't get myself to let go and honestly they wouldn't let me go i kept seeing them i kept seeing them in groups you know and i kept talking about them and all that like every time i would see pon a post about poncho it was like i can get that bloodline and i can it could be the foundation, part of the foundation of my bloodline. I would love to have a pawn chip up. <clears throat> I know. He did say he'd make us a deal one, too. No. <laughs> no, I'm good. But I would love to have a pawn chip up just because, I don't, I don't know, I'm just curious to see if he can reproduce. And I would like to see it for myself. Like, have the dog get to see it in person, not right. just on Facebook. Right. But, I don't want a black and tan right now. Yeah. I'm good with my red dogs. You'll wise up one of these days. No, I like my red dogs. I'm just kidding. I, I like your red dogs too. I really like. I really do like Dog Holiday. He was a jerk last night. Yeah. But, anyway. So, that's kind of what we got going on for as new dogs and puppies and kind of a little bit of that i gave you a little bit of insight on my plan uh, i do plan on you know breeding izzy to this new pup not anytime soon it'll be two three years in line and then breeding a female out of them to hercules so doc oh, my voice cracked doc will be bred to karma years to come so pretty much we're gonna have heavy G blood on our red dogs along with Moonlight Kate and you have to take over because you know more about the stuff than I do. <clears throat> Timber Chopper. <clears throat> but the plan is Doc will be bred to Karma. Nelly will be bred. To Reaper because I can't breed Karma to Reaper because Karma's dad is G's full litter mate. I can't do that. I mean, I could, but I don't want to. Yeah, we're, we're, we got a. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the whole line breeding thing. I don't like it. I could see the positives, but I see a lot of negatives with it too. I don't know. Just, when I, it's down the line, it's not that bad. But it, it's something that I would, you know, we'd have to play with. But at the same time, it's like we don't want to play with it with, you know, our quality dogs. I guess. I mean, our our higher end dogs. It'd have to be. Maybe we do it with like squirrel dogs or something. <laughs> now I might take a dog karma puppy and breed it to Reaper. But to breed karma to Reaper. I couldn't do that. And honestly, I don't even think I would breed a dog karma puppy to Reaper. I feel like that's still too close. That's it's all opinion thing there. I mean, you know, can you do it? Yes. But is it beneficial? We don't know. But anyway, let's transition into the actual topic of today's episode. Alright, so the actual topic of today's episode is actually keeping detailed notes on your dogs. It's something we started at the beginning of this year, uh, 2021. I said 2020. <laughs> um, but I started with Hercules from, really from when I got him. Because I got him, we got him what, September last year? October, something like that? Uh, yeah. We, 
we got him late in 2020, and um, so there wasn't really a whole lot to record from 2020. But what I started doing as as we were making trees and all that stuff with him, uh, I started making notes on him. You know, at blah blah blah, he was training drag, and at blah blah blah, he was training you know roadkill coons. At blah blah blah, he saw his first cage coon. Then as he started treeing, I keep what I do is <clears throat> I keep my notes on my phone. I have a a list. I've got um, trees he's made, um, the the number of trees he's made. I've got trees with the meat. I've got dens. I've got um, slicks. And I've got possums. Which he hasn't treated any possum, but and then I keep a percentage of an accuracy percentage. And then under that, I keep, like, any notes, like, um, like his bloodline. A lot of people ask me his bloodline, so I have his, you know, who he's out of, you know, his parents. I have it right there so I can just copy and paste it. Um, and then I have, you know, every tree he's made. And literally it says first tree with the date, whether who he was with, the location, what it was, you know, whether it was a, a you know, with the meat, um, a den, a slick, whatever. And then I, I keep that. He, he, like, if I knocked it out to him during shootout season, I keep that. I knocked it out to him. And then if, you know, I do knock it out, I keep that it's a, a boar or a sow. So if, say, three years from now you come to me and you're asking me about my dog, um, and, guys, we put, a, we put a lot of thought into this when it comes to uh, establishing our bloodlines. And that's kind of why I wanted to do this with this in this episode was talking about, you know, my new puppy that I'm, I'm planning on getting, um, which I'm, I'm literally sending the deposit today on my way to work. So uh, if all goes, unless something happens or whatever, we will be getting this dog in a couple weeks. I think they're, I think they're four weeks old tomorrow, today, tomorrow. I don't know. No, they were four weeks old, like three or four days ago. But, so it should become five weeks. But anyway, we, we put a lot of thought in this. We don't just, I mean, it's not like we're just picking a random dog and breeding them. So, I want detailed notes on all my dogs. I have notes on Sally and Doc from starting from 2021. Um, we didn't, I wish I would have thought of this in, in late 2020 when we got them. I could have kept notes on them from, you know, the time we got them all the way till now but i didn't think about it you know whatever but if you come to me in three years and say you know i'm interested in i'm interested in a pup out of you know hard ham and hercules crossed with lights out izzy so i can say okay you know i i don't know about you guys but i ask about the parents well most people are just like, oh, they're good dogs, you know, treat coons regularly, whatever, which is fine. I mean, you know, that's just how it is. But if you come to me and you ask me, you know, three years from now, a pup out of Izzy and Herc, and you're saying, you know, how's the dad? I'd say, well, he treated his first coon at nine months old, uh, and he's treated X amount of coons since then. He's been whatever accurate. And, you know, I can tell you everything. He's vaccinated on here. He was done. I mean, all this was done at this time. And you say, okay, what about the, what about the female? Well, this is her. This is her bloodline. She treated her first coon here. She treated, you know, her, her heat cycles are this. Um, you know, she usually comes in, like Sally comes in in October. And um, May, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I'll have to look. But... You know, she her the mother typically comes in at this time. Um, she's treated this amount of coon. She's been this amount of accurate. She you know, she's treated this much trash or whatever. I mean, whatever it is, and I can tell you exactly detailed, and I can show it to you. You know, I mean, it's not like you're. I'm just saying, all my dogs eighty percent accurate. He treats eight out of every ten coons. He'll have them. I can prove it to you. I mean, granted, I could probably go through and make the list of just random notes and all that but I, i'm not gonna do three years worth of notes just to sell you a puppy if you're that doubt if you're that doubtful about 
buying one of my dogs, you probably don't want. I probably don't want you to buy one of my dogs anyway. But that's that's kind of why I do it. It helps me, and it also looking back on it, it helps me. Like when when Hercules started having his problem with pulling up slick at like forty yards, I look and look back at my notes, and I can say, okay, well he treated Coon by himself here at this location, and I can think about the demographic of the area, you know, the terrain, you know, the coon population, whatever, uh, the food sources and all that. I can see how many feeders he's been ran on. If I've run him on a feeder in a while, because we do do that typically with young dogs. Um, Hercules, not so much anymore, but when he was younger, I was running him on feeders because I'm trying to build his confidence. I can say, I can look back and say it's been 31 days since he's treated coon. Uh, or like it's been, you know, two days since he's treated coon. Um, he's slicked so many in a row, whatever. When I do this with him is when he slicks. Like, it gives me, it gives me the best opportunity to not only learn my dog, but I can see what we need to work on. I can tell you exactly everything he's done, where his weak points are, where his strong points are. Um, and, you know, I mean, I can tell you everything about the dog. And I have proof of it. And for me, that's that's important for me because not only does it, you know, prove that, you know, he's a good dog or he's not a good dog or he's a mediocre dog, but it helps me improve him and help him with his weak points. Do you have anything to say on it? I can keep more detailed notes on Reaper. What? I keep more detailed notes on Reaper. But that's just me. You keep more. Why? Why? I mean, I just I have the first time he was ever turned out, how far he went, who he went with, what he did, and then I'll just keep adding to that. But that's that's just me. Right. But I mean, we you know, we do that with with all our dogs. Um, and and it's really not that much extra work. It takes fifteen seconds. Once you initially set up everything, and we've even talked about making a notebook for this. Um, you know, with like, I don't even know how to lay it out, but where you could write everything down with pen and pencil if you wanted to. But I just keep my notes because I always have my phone with me. I keep on the notes on my phone. But I mean, yeah, that's 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 kind of why. Um, I don't even remember where I got the idea from. Barry Morris. Is that what it was? Yeah. Well, Barry Morris. I love Barry. Barry, if you ever listen to these podcasts, please message me. I would love to meet you. You're like my favorite person. <laughs> <laughs> he did like, I seen where he liked um, posting red one of the Red Dog groups about a uh, video the other day, yesterday. Yeah. He's my favorite person. I don't even know why. I think it's just well, I like I like his dogs. I really want a dog off a uh, punch, but I don't know. Oh, uh, he's funny. Like I don't know if any of you are in like the Robo Coon Hunters. I think that's the only group I'm in that he's in. Um, mm, I think he's in Red Dog Nation too. Is he? I, I don't think, think so. I'm a part of Red Dog Nation. Oh, uh, you should be. I didn't know that was a thing. Yep. But he's always. He po- he hunts every day, and he hunts early in the morning. Uh, what, like three thirty or four until daylight? Yeah. And he hunts the swamps, cause he's down in uh, South Carolina. South Carolina, yeah. And it's actually funny. The breeder for Karma knows Barry and hunts with Barry. And I just I don't know. I thought that was great. And then I I had a boy message me this morning. Oh, I can't. I mean, he's a man. He's older than me. I can't say he's a boy, but. A guy messaged me today that knows Barry and was talking, was talking about Barry. And I was, t- I was telling him how Barry's our, one of our favorite people um, in the in the community. Especially. He's just so honest. Like, he doesn't care. He yes. will, if his dog's tree possum, he's going to show you that his dog's tree possum. If his dog slicks, he's going to show you, like, I don't know. That's, I just think he has a really good dog. That's kind of how we are, too. I mean. You know, I've said it a million times. If you guys haven't seen our YouTube channel, I mean, you'll hear me say it. And and what cracks me up is, is it's kind of like, 
I don't know, I don't want to get, like, political or nothing like that, but it's kind of like, it's not really even a political thing, it's just a culture thing, like, people enjoy failure more than they do success, like, our videos yeah. where, our, like, the dogs have screwed up, they've slicked, or anything like that, you know, they get more views than the ones where, you know, we go out and treat coons, which doesn't make sense to me in a way, I mean, I understand why people, you know, they want to see what happened and what went wrong, but at the same time, it's like, I man, how are you all watching? How do you, I don't know how to say this. Like, how do you seek out failure videos? And I know there's like whole accounts and stuff for just like, just like montages of fails and stuff. And I guess that's what people enjoy. I don't know if that's a self-esteem issue or what, but like, we, anyway, I'm, I'm not going to get onto that, but we try to show, I mean, we try to be as transparent as possible. I mean, like I could have easily... Last night, just delete the videos from last night. Never talked about it. No, it never happened. I could have never put it in my notes where we talked about, you know, that we were just talking about. And, you know, Doc went from 81% accurate down to 72% accurate. So, like, we could just pretend that didn't happen and still say Doc's been 80% accurate. But that's not what we're trying to do here. That's not, not who we are, you know. We're trying to not only be transparent and all that, but we're trying to have the best possible dogs, and if we can't accept the fact that our dog has screwed up, or our dog has done something wrong, and made a mistake, then we're probably not going to have the quality dogs that we're trying to produce. That's another thing, like, people never want to talk about when their dogs mess up. I don't understand that. Like, I, I really do wish somebody could explain it to me. Because... I don't like I've said a million times they're dogs they're not robots like they're gonna mess up things happen you can't expect to have a perfect dog because that's just never gonna happen and, and honestly if you're one of those guys that say your dog and not to rag on walker people but it's always the walker guys not always but 99% of the time if you come to me and or you comment on my on my thing and say that your dog on a hundred drops or a hundred trees had a hundred coons, I'll toss you the keys in my truck if you can prove it. Like, there is no way, I don't care, I don't care the best dog in the entire world is not going to tree a hundred out of a hundred coons every time. No. Like, it's okay to, to not have the best dog. I know it might come at your ego or whatever, but like, no, first of all, nobody, nobody believes you. I'm sorry. I don't care what your mommy said. <laughs> if you if you say that your dog has went went a hundred for a hundred and has never missed, never never slicked, never uh, ran off game or any of that stuff, the dog is at six months old, treated its first coon, and has never missed since then. Bullshit. Don't don't try to lie to me. I don't care. And it could be a really good dog. Just accept it. Like, I, I don't know who you think you're fooling, but it ain't me. And I'm not I'm not going to be that guy. I can tell you, you know, tell you Hercules has slicked, uh, I think, four times in his life. And I can tell you, I can I can visually remember every single time, and I can take you to every single place he's done it. And I will. I mean, if you want to. I don't know. I've got videos of literally all of it. Maybe I'll make, maybe I'll make a video of all our dog slicks. Yeah. I mean that that's how, <laughs> that's how honest and open we are. We are with this thing. Like, we want to produce good dogs and good content. I don't want a highlight reel. I don't like watching highlight reels all the time, every time. I want to see actual hunts. I want to see actual experiences, and that's what we try to produce. So. Well, another thing is we have a lot of, I don't like to say kids because they're not really kids but we have a lot of younger people that are like 15 16 years old that message us and have questions but honestly I think it's mainly because we are so open and honest like I know if I was 16 years old I probably wouldn't want to message somebody about my dog that slicked if they literally always post how perfect their dog is you know what I mean right yes like well, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example of how honest we are. Last night, one of the slicks, and I can I can almost 
I lay money that I know exactly what happened. Doc, last night, that second slick. Yeah. The hole. So what it was is there was a tree that had uprooted and fallen back in the wintertime of this ice storm. And what it was is there was a hole, I mean, a pretty good-sized hole that went, like, where the root ball was. It was a pine tree. You know, they're shallow root, root trees. What I think has happened was that coon went down in there thinking it was a hole and then come back up over the top and then ran out the log because the tree wasn't all the way on the ground. It was laying down, but it wasn't all the way down. It went up into another tree. And I even looked, I looked for the coon, but I couldn't see it. Well, I think what happened was that coon went down there thinking it was a hole trying to, you know, hide or whatever. And it went down there and realized it wasn't a hole and went back over the root ball and up the, up the base of that tree all the way up and out somewhere was probably sitting 40 yards from us watching us i could have easily looked at it and been like oh it's a hole good boy doc you know call it a den go on about our day but i crawled down in there i looked and i made sure that you know there was a hole and it actually wasn't a hole i mean it there i guess there's a chance that it could have been a small coon and there was a you know a four inch four or five inch hole that it could have went into but i really don't think that's what happened that's why i called a slick and I showed it in the video. It's things like that. It's honesty and honestly being is reality. You know, if you live in a fantasy world that your dog is the best dog ever, don't bother keeping this, these notes. Don't bother doing anything we're telling you. And honestly, don't bother following us because that's not how we are. It's not what we are. And that's not what you're going to see here. What you see here is what we see. Now, I don't show the drop where we turn the dogs out and they hunt, you know, a whole holler out and then don't come up with anything. Yeah. Don't come up with anything. Never draw a bark. That's boring. You know, I don't want to edit. I don't want to take the time to edit that because I'll fall asleep doing it. Cause it's boring. Now, sometimes I'll show if we make a drop in the, in like the beginning of the night and I film it and then we make two or three more drops and the first drop, it was nothing. There was, we made four trees after that. I might show in the first drop of us cutting the dog loose. Then I'll put like a little thing that says, no luck on the next one or something like that. That's different. But in, in reality, you guys see everything. I think there's... I don't, I don't think there's a slick or something that we haven't posted. I mean, we literally show you everything. I can't think of one. I, I, I didn't mean to go off on a rant. It's just like... Oh, I just thought about this, and this is totally off subject. But back to a good thing that happened last night. Nellie loads herself. <laughs> yeah so we didn't know that nelly will load reaper will not load reaper hates the dog box he doesn't get sick but he gets super slobbery he hates the dog box hercules doesn't mind the dog box but he will not jump on the tailgate i don't know i need to work with him on it i need to like we need to make a video on that i've got it in the list of video ideas and videos future videos to make but to make it easier on him and build his confidence up he's just a big pud he's afraid to jump up there Nellie just, she had no problem. Yeah. She just like, jumped right up there. Right in the box she went. I was like, huh. I didn't know she did that. And then we fought with Reaper for 20 minutes <gasps> trying to get him in, into the box. Reaper hates the box because it makes him sick. Yeah. Like, he, when we first started taking him, he would throw up. And then now he just slobbers. So now every time he sees the and, box, and he's like, oh no. <laughs> last night he didn't even slobber that bad. He's He's coming seven months seven eight months old so he's getting better with it but yeah last night he just slobbered a little bit i mean which we didn't go very far but he's getting better with it that one night we went i let you drive we didn't have the dog box in the truck and we just go in like two miles so i rode in the back with the dogs worst idea i've ever had <laughs> reaper was slobber i was soaked when we got there from reaper slobber it was disgusting but yeah that's another thing too i mean if our dogs won't load we'll tell you that's that dog hank i had I had him for six, eight months, and he didn't load up to two weeks before I sold him. Yep. Made me so mad. Pick that dog up every time, and then literally two weeks before I sold him, he's just, he just jumped up every one day. I'm like, you prick. Reaper's going to have to learn how to load, because he's like dog size. Yeah, at eight months old. He's probably 65-ish pounds, I'd say, at eight months I'm old. I'm pretty sure he grew like four inches while we... The two days we were gone. Yeah. I went down there to feed yesterday before work, and I was like, dude, you've got huge... Yeah. Like, are you on steroids? Because you were huge. And he's solid. Yeah, he's... Yeah. He's not like, oh yeah, that's a puppy. No, he looks like a grown adult dog. 
Yeah. He's solid. Honestly, if he was dark like Doc, I wouldn't be able to tell him apart like when they were out running. No. And he honestly might be a little bit taller than Doc. He might be. Yeah. He, he's he's going to be a big boy. When he fills out, too, oh, my gosh. Well, we like him big. <laughs> yeah. So. Except for Nelly. Nelly and, and Izzy. Izzy's tiny, too. Yeah. Izzy's big, but she ain't tall. <laughs> <laughs> She's thicker than her snicker. She's thick with, <laughs> she thick, thick with six C's. I mean, she's, it ain't even three. She's thick. She's thicker than a snicker. I don't know about karma yet. Uh, she looks like a little alien. She looks weird. Everybody's like, oh, that dog was so cute. I'm like, oh, no, it doesn't look like a little alien. Her head's cute. No, it's not. Her face is cute. Her head is what makes her look like an alien. She's got that big knot head. Oh, and, and her really long ears. A real long skinny neck and like skinny <laughs> body. She looks weird. I don't, I don't think she's, she's pretty. She's got a very pointy. Distinguished point. Point on her head. Which is houndy. I mean, it's what we like. We like the, hound, the houndy point and big long houndy ears. Hopefully she grows into... Well, not too long of ears. I don't, I don't know. That looks like a easy, you know, leverage point for a coon. Well, that's what I said about Reaper. Reaper has the longest ears yep. so far. Yep. He's going to have to learn how to hold his own. Yep. Coons are going to have a time with them ears. Anyway, um, is there anything else you want to add to this topic or this podcast? No, not really. Not that I can think of right now. All right, so, guys, we really appreciate y'all. Um, the support has been insane. I mean... I didn't I, think people would want to listen to us talk. Never in a million years would I have thought it, it would go this well. I mean, I thought it would be a few... Guys, we've got some fans. I, I wouldn't call them fans. We've got avid viewers on our YouTube channel and, you know, some people that we connect with often. I figured they'd be the ones that'd be, you know, 10, 12, maybe 20 people watch it. Or listen to it, and I think right now the analytics on the pot, the first podcast because that's the only one's out. The second episode don't come out till tomorrow, but and that's also another thing, guys. With our stuff, all our stuff is like usually a week out, if not more, because where we're so busy, we try to film it and get it all done, and we try to stay a week to maybe even three weeks ahead. I think there was one time we were five five weeks ahead on our videos. Yeah, that was nice. That was awesome. But anyway, um, the analytics on the first first podcast is like 200 plays on the podcast apps. And I think it's got around 100 plays on YouTube, which is absolutely insane. I never thought, I never in a million years would I thought that it would go like this. I figured it would just be 10, 20, 30 views here and there. But guys, we really appreciate it. Um, it really means a lot to us. Um, and we, we can't thank you guys enough. Um, we... With that being said, our Facebook page, as of this morning, we needed 17 likes. So, if you're hearing this, um, it'll be, this podcast will be posted, I believe, it'll be October when this is posted. So, if, if we haven't reached 1,000 um, likes on our Facebook page yet, go over to Facebook and give us a like. Um, when we hit 1,000, we're going to do a giveaway. So we have, when we were t planning on going to Autumn Oaks, we had two shirts and three hats made. Um, we had two gray hats, and then Jade had one hat made for her. So one of the hats I wear, the, the green hat Jade wears, well, one of the gray hats is, is new, un unworn. We're going to give it away. I'm going to be giving away a um, tree shaker, coon squaller. And a fifty dollar gift card to Outdoor Dog Supply. None of this is sponsored. I didn't reach out to these guys. I absolutely love these guys. I love Bayou Calls. I love my tree shaker, and I get all my stuff from Outdoor Dog Supply. Every single, every single collar, every single lead, everything I can, I get from Outdoor Dog Supply. Those guys are great over there, and we really enjoy, we really enjoy them. We use everything we can from them. So that's why I want to give a gift card. So you, the winner, if you've never been to Outdoor Dog Supply. You can check them out and see, you know, what they got and what they carry. They're they're a great, great supplier. So when we hit a thousand likes on on face on our Facebook page, we've already got like a thousand thirteen followers. But I want to hit a thousand likes. I'll be doing that giveaway. It'll be completely free to enter, and I'll probably I haven't got the the whole details out yet, but I'll probably do it mid or either mid or towards the end of October is when I'll do some sort of drawing. Um, 
I won't go with official details until we hit that 1,000. So if you're listening to this um, for like the first week of October, I think is when it should go live. If you're listening to this, you still have time to go over and enter. Give us a like, and you'll be able to enter that giveaway. Um, I'm telling you guys first because uh, it'll be you guys are a week a week and a day behind um, real time. So um, I don't know if that's – I hope that's not too – that wasn't too confusing, was it? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, basically, when we hit 1,000 likes on our Facebook page, we're doing a giveaway – um, if you're not liking us already on Facebook, please check us out. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please check us out on YouTube. Um, we're going pretty pretty good on YouTube, so if we can keep that momentum going, that would be great. Um, but all in all, we just want to thank you guys for the support, and we're going to try to do as many giveaways and all that as we can with you guys to give back.